Uh, if you're like me, as an electrician, there's probably a good chance that you have, or at some point, will install uh, a 750 volt or less dry type transformer. Uh, these are just devices that we are installing all the time. Uh, and it's really important to ensure that we're sizing the overcurrent protection for these devices correctly. Uh, right, we want to make sure that our conductors and the equipment and the load are all protected. Um, so that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, we're going to use this one as an example. Uh, we're going to cover all the rules that go along with sizing that overcurrent device. Um, it is just one rule in our code book and I'll talk about that rule down below in the description. Um, and the biggest thing with all transformer rules and calculations for overcurrents, we know any of the three different types of transformers, which I do have the other videos which you can check out. Um, but this one, most common type in the actual installation field, or in the field. Uh, the biggest thing is you want to make sure you read the whole rule. Don't just read one sub rule and think you're done because they sneak up on you. There's sub rules way down that'll apply. So you want to make sure you're reading the whole rule when you're checking it out. We'll kind of cover the basics here in this video. So I've got, uh, as an example, the 60 kVA three phase dry type 600 to 240 volt transformer. And I've got it drawn into a system where I have a main, a feeder OC. We'll call that right up here. This is our feeder OC. This would be our primary. OC, and then down here, I've drawn in a secondary OC, but you're not always going to install these, right? Secondary OC. So we'll kind of talk about two to three different installation methods here, I guess two. Uh, let's say we are installing a secondary OC, because we'll talk about the primary OC process later. If you have a secondary OC, our rule tells us, okay, Hey, if you're going to install a secondary overcurrent device, it shall be installed and sized so that the overcurrent device does not exceed 125% the rated current of the transformer. Easy. So if we're installing a secondary OC, and this is a big if, right? Not always will you have one. It tells us that you're uh, you cannot exceed, exceed 125% of I secondary, or of your rated secondary current. Awesome. So in this case, we're going to calculate our rated secondary current. So that's our current that will be flowing through that transformer. I'm going to take my 60 kVA. 60,000 VA divided by 240 volts times root three because it is a three phase system. What I end up with is I end up with an I secondary of 144.3 amps. So that's my calculation. Now I have 100, up to 144.3 amps flowing on my secondary. My rule says that you can size that overcurrent device based on 125%. So I'm going to go 144.3 amps times 125%, which gives me 180.4 amps. Now the trick here is the wording. It says the overcurrent device shall not exceed 125%, meaning if I go to the store and there's not a 180.4 amp overcurrent device available, I have to go down to a smaller size. So if you're using based off of table 13, this would mean I would be in a 175 amp overcurrent device. All right, but talk to your wholesaler, see what they have available. Awesome. Then we keep reading the rule and there's something special that this one says. This says, if you have a secondary overcurrent device, if I have a secondary, which right here I do, you shall, you shall be permitted to omit the primary. So I don't need a primary. If 
My feeder overcurrent does not exceed 300% the rating of the primary. Awesome. So let's just say, um, let's do some math here and we all figure out this I primary. My I primary, right, 60 kVA divided by 600 volts times root three ends up giving me a primary. Uh, so my I primary ends up equaling 57.7 amps. Let's just say this feeder OC is big, you know, it's a 400 amp overcurrent device. Well, unfortunately 400 amps exceeds 300% of this, uh, so we would end up needing a primary OC. But if this was, you know, 100 amps, well then I could omit that primary overcurrent device if I have that secondary device. So that's something cool you can do with these transformers. But we just determined we need one anyways. Also, if I had no secondary overcurrent at all, then I 100% will need that primary overcurrent. And this is how we size it. So I have my primary uh, current 57.7 amps. What this tells me is my primary overcurrent device needs to be 125% of rated current. So in this case, we are going to go 57.7 amps times 125%, which gives us 72.1 amps. Now here's the trick. The rule does tell us you cannot exceed 125% of the rating, meaning I cannot exceed 72.1. This is one of those hiccups where we have to keep reading and a few sub rules later, it tells us if 125% of the rating of the overcurrent device is not available, which I go to the store, 72.1 is not available, the next higher size shall be permitted. So in this case, on table 13, we're actually permitted to go up to an 80 amp overcurrent device, right? So it's very different, right? With the secondary, we were not permitted to go up. With the primary, we are permitted to go up. So that's just your big trick that you want to watch out for. Uh, again, if I had no secondary OC at all, I would size my primary the exact same way. So this primary calculation works both ways. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped. That's why I make them. If there's any other topics you want to see a video on, just post it in the comments below or if you have any questions, uh, please, I'd appreciate it if you didn't mind subscribing. Check out my other videos. Have an awesome day.